Saturday at 9 o'clock, we'll have breakfast. First Wednesday is on the 2nd at 7 o'clock. Uh, prayer on the 5th, and then Brother Anderson will be with us on the 6th. Easter is a mere three months away. Hallelujah. And the snow will be gone by April 17th. That's true. My dad is the deter- In the back on the table and in the back on my office, we have invite cards for Easter. It even has a map on the back of how to get to our church. That's right. Some of you could use this map. I'm not saying who. We're not calling people out. But you know who you are. <laughs> See some knowing looks going on in the back. Ah, we're not going to call Jessica out. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so take a hand. We have five. We have five hundred of these. You're gonna give it to her. There you go. So now Jessica has her own map. We have five hundred of these cards. Um, if you want to mail them, there's a place for a stamp on them. A first class stamp will, will work just fine on these. Um, in 2020, we bought a bunch of cards. We were gonna really promote Easter hard. And who remembers what happened at Easter in 2020? Yeah, that's what happened. We didn't have church. We did. It was me and Daniel. I think my dad showed up. The mans may have showed up. But we videoed it because we were in the middle of the end of the world. Yeah, Rocky stayed in bed like he does most Sundays, even if there isn't COVID. But so here's the thing. Um, hand those out. It does us no because there's, they're dated to this year. So they go, well, I'll just save them for next year. There won't be any good next year. So hand all 500 of them out. If we have to set out chairs, we'll set out chairs. That'll be great. But I really want us to put a hard push on Easter this year. Uh, I am excited about what God's going to do. Now, two Sundays before that, on April 3rd, is our seventh anniversary. We've been at this for seven years. And uh, so I'm really excited about that as well. God has been so good to us. And I believe he's going to do even greater things than these. Um, Jack, you're, it looks like you're going to be the only one who got to use this because we have a new baptistry that will be coming. Um, and it's going, to be, we're going to, it's going to be permanent and installed right over here. And then we'll give this one to Jack as a lovely parting gift. So he can just go out in the backyard and baptize himself whenever he wants to. He goes, Brenda, you got me so worked up. I'm going to go baptize myself. That's right. So we'll give that to Jack and send it. And he can put it up in his... In his backyard. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't use it right now. I'd wait till summer. Yeah, you know, it'll be much, much more enjoyable then. Or you may send Brenda there and tell her she needs to get baptized, you know, and get some of them spirits off of her. Yeah, well, you know, you know, Jesus healed the man once and he said, what do you see? And he said, I see men as trees. And Jesus said, well, maybe we need to lick that calf again. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. So... Aren't you glad I'm not preaching today? Because I am wound for sound. Um, yeah. We are, uh, we, we are, uh, thank you, first of all, for your offerings uh, uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, it keeps the heat on. How many likes having the heat on? Yes. Uh, thank you for the, your giving. And thank you for that. Um, and um, Amen. We are so glad that Brother Mann is going to preach this morning. Um, when we, ha- yeah, give him a hand. Give give the man a hand. Woo! Uh, when we when we planted this church, the Manns came with us, and uh, we started it in Mark and Kathy's dining room, and um, Jack and Brenda were there, and uh, Mark and Kathy and Don Teresa and my family, and that was Crossroads when we started. Um, and I am so grateful for these folks. I tell, I tell everybody who I meet that, that's my son's iPad, um, that Crossroads would not exist without Don and Teresa Mann. Um, and, and I told him, uh, I said, if you have a word, just tell me and we'll, and he goes, I do have a word. And I said, well, let's get you on the schedule, man. Um, so I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Uh, get behind the preacher this morning. And we're so glad he's here. Amen. I want to do something a little different this morning. Is that all right? Can we be different? We are different. We are different. Even different than different. 
What I'd like for us to do is I'd like for us to pray a prayer this morning. God, if there's more for me, I want it. God, if there's a step I need to take, help me take it. And God, if there's words that I need to say to somebody, help me say it. How many want God to work in your life? Are you willing? Will you pray that prayer this morning? God, if there's more for me, give it to me. Will you pray that prayer with me? God, I love you this morning. I'm thankful to be in this house, God. And Lord, if there's more for me, I want it. Lord, I desire all of you that I can get because I need you to get through this world and to do the things you desire. I want your will done in my life, Lord. When we pray that prayer, let your will be done in my life, Lord. Use these vessels, God, that you've prepared. Lord, use these hearts that you've put in place. And God, use the word that you can use them to speak. God, help us in this time. Lord, help us to understand you and to walk with you, God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If we're going to do anything in 2022, it's got to be with him. We can't do it on our own. I can't do it on my own. I need every one of you, and I need my pastor. He set up a guideline for us, and we need to follow the guideline. Firemen use guidelines in the burning places to get in and get out because they can't see. We need that. God's our guideline. He's the one that will lead us and guide us. He takes us day by day. Aren't you glad God is slow to anger? I know I've ticked him off too many times. I know I've stepped on him stupidly because he always wins the arguments. But God will take us step by step. We can't take our little babies and feed them steak, right? Everything's a step. Everything's a step. So the first thing is, is a step, right? How many of you believe? Well, there's a few believe. There's a few believe. Yeah, a couple believe. That's the first step. But you know there's more than that? You know the Bible tells me that Satan's imps in them believe. Let's take a look at James 2.19, if I can get uh, Gabrielle to help me a little bit. Let's read it together. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So believing's not enough, but it's a step. We need to step into that. We need to let God have his way. You must believe. Let's try 11, Hebrews 11.6, 11, Gabriel. I've got a lot of scriptures, and I want to get a point across, and I'll get there. Just bear with me. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know what the Bible says we're destroyed for? The Bible tells us we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He's not talking to worldly knowledge. He's not talking about college. He's talking about his word. You know why Brother Ryan wants us to read the word and pray every day? So we get the knowledge of God and God can use us in what he has in his will for us. Every one of us have a will of God in our life. If we'll use it, step in it. How many is afraid of God? God, I'm glad to see it. Are you afraid of God? Don't be afraid of God. Are your kids, are your kids afraid of you? Are, you? are you serious? Wow. Turn her into children's services. Not really. I'm just teasing. God's not here to hurt you. God's here to help you. We don't need to fear him. Let him use you. Let him speak through you. Let him pray through you. You know, when you're praying and you go into intercessory prayer, you may not know what you're praying for. But God has put that in you to pray. So we went through the steps of believing. There's one more. Let's look at John 3.16. Everybody can cite, recite that, can't they? But without, that's the wrong one. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All the word of God blends together. And it's step by step, here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept, God will build you. He won't force this stuff down you, and he won't force himself on you. God is a gentleman. 
and He loves you, and He would never force anything on you because your will is what's got to break to let His will through. He's looking for more. He's looking to take us to another step. Babies, when, when they're born, they do not start off walking. You know that, right? Babies do not jump up and run. Babies do not sit at the table and cut their steak and eat it. Mom and dad's got to feed them. Mom and dad's got to help them to walk. Mom and dad's got to do a lot of things for these babies. So as Christians, we're babes in Christ. Amen? We're babes in Christ. So he says... Let me help you. Now, I've given you a road map, and I've given you my promises, and I've given you my word. Now, let's see if we can follow his word. I'll be honest with you. I was glad this fast was over. But you know what? Some things only come by prayer and fasting. I had several headaches through the last three weeks, and several things go wrong. And every time we go in this fast, it happens. But that's putting down the flesh and letting the Spirit of God come alive in you. Because you know why I had the headaches? Because I drank coffee like a coffee fiend. I had all that build up in me, and then I say, oh, no more. And then all the headaches come. But God helped me through it. God helped me through it. So you know repentance, right? You know repentance? Repent and believe. Believe in the Gospels. Let Let me stop for a second. A week or so ago, I talked to you about the different dispensations of time. Do you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is still part of the Old Testament? It was before the death of Christ. There's a lot of things that went on in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that are different in the book of Acts because Christ had not yet died. The Spirit could not be poured out until He ascended. So sometimes we're reading all this, but we need to obey what the Scriptures say, and the Gospels are a little different because Christ is still alive. That's about His life being born about his walk in life, about his miracles, and giving of himself for you and I. So we have to first believe. Have to first believe. Let's take a look again at the next step. We talked about believing. We talked about repentance. Let's go to Mark 16, 16. What's our next step? What's our next walk? What do we have to do, God? There's more for me. There's more for me. I like what Brother Ryan says. I don't want to take away from anything that you've accomplished in God and what you see in God and where you're going. But maybe we can add to it. Maybe we can help you walk in a walk that God wants you in a little closer to Him and give you a little bit of information that the Word says that we can share with you. So let's take a look at that. Mark 16, 16. What's it say? Again, he that believeth. There's the first step. We've repented and is, and is baptized. Now shall be saved. There's another step there. Do you see the step? That's the step that God's telling us. Hey, hey, I'm glad you believe. And it's be baptized and you shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be blotted out. I'll change that word, all right? <laughs> shall be blotted out. We talked about being blotted out. Like I told you, in the book of life, your name's going to be written down. And mine's been put in there and then blotted out and put in there and blotted out. So when he looks at it, he's going to say, blot, 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 blot. Oh, there he's back. There he's back. God loves you so much, he gives us baby steps. And we can learn it if we will take it. I'm glad nobody tried to force me. Now, I came in under a lot of different ministers. And I heard a lot of different things. And I learned from every one of them. And I'm telling you, some of them had to be hard because I was hard-headed. I was the hard-headed guy. I was the one that's going to do it my way. I was going to do it my way. Guess what? I can't get there my way. I got to get there his way. So I had ministers come to the house and teach me Bible studies. I had ministers come by and pray with me. I had ministers come and worship with me and help me understand things that I didn't understand. And that's what we're doing. We're going step by step. I've had over 40 years of this. And it's step by step. And I'm not there yet. i got a long way to go because it's not all here. It's all in here. So this is what we got to do. There's more steps. Let's take a look at Colossians 2.12. As we go there, you know what baptism means? 
This is how I was taught. Brother Ryan can correct me if I'm wrong. But baptism is baptismo. And in the old language, it means to take something, clothing, and you ladies probably know a whole lot more about it than I do, and you shove it down in dye, and you bury it. You know, if you don't go all the way with it, it won't change the color of it. So baptismo is to mean buried, and you pull it up, and it's changed, right? That's what baptism is. So we're going to be talking about baptism now. And God, in his walk, or Jesus in his walk, talked in parables and trained us in parables. And he used all kinds of worldly things. And that's why our ministers use worldly objects to help us understand what the scriptures say. So if you're buried and you're baptized, what do you got to be done? You got to be buried, right? So let's take a look. Colossians 2.12. Buried with him in baptism. We just heard that they that believe in are baptized. Now we're going to take it one step farther, and we're going to say with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. As we go forward and taking these steps with Christ, and we believe, we, we believe, we repent, and we're baptized, and now we're buried with him in baptism, and we come back to newness of life. We're buried with him, and we rise to him in newness of life. That's baptism. Not only that, we're taking on more when we do that. Let's look at Acts chapter 8, verse 38 through 39. God gives us all this information on what he desires. And I hope we can get that desire put in us that we can share this with the world. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Verse 39. All right. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. The eunuch was standing in a chariot. Let me narrow it down a little bit. Reading the Word of God. Trying to understand. And Philip happens by and he says, hey, Philip could see him. Hey, what are you reading? He said, well, I really don't understand this. I need somebody to explain. Philip said, that's why I'm here. And Philip told him what he had to do. And they both went down into the water and came straight way up out of the water. We don't have to do that here because we got a baptismal coming. We can just put the Baptist guy into it and we'll call him Jack the Baptist. <laughs> but you bury them you know why you raised the newness of life because you just buried your old life and washed away your sin you washed it away and you rise to newness of life how clean you feel once God does that with you and you go and obey him see obedience is greater than sacrifice Obedience, being obedient to the Word of God, following the Word of God and doing what His will is, that's important. It's greater than sacrifice because the supreme sacrifice was Jesus Christ that we could be buried with Him and come to newness of life. The old man's put away and the new man's risen. How we do that? In Christ. I know a lot of you know this stuff, but I felt so impressed that this is needed to be done and to explain what baptism and the walks of life and the steps of life and that God's slow with us. And he'll take us in that. He'll take us slowly. He'll take you at your pace. But he wants you to learn more of him. Do you ever quit learning about God? Brother Ryan, you ever quit learning about God? Jack, you ever quit learning about God? You know it all about him? We'll never know all of God until we get there and see him face to face. Let's go to Matt, uh, Matthew 3.16. <clears throat> once again he's telling us and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him straightway emerged up out of the water 
The next one's a little bit longer, but I, I want to go into it. It's Acts 19, verse 1 through 7. Acts 19, 1 through 7. God's working on a lot of things in these steps for us. You know, the Gospels, like I said, is the, is the life, the birth, and the death, actually through His life, about all Him on earth. Once He ascended, things changed again because we started another dispensation of time called grace. And that's what we're living in now. We're living in grace. We're living under His mercies. We're living under His word and His forgiveness. But the only way we get His forgiveness is to do what He asks us to do, His will. And it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Verse 2, finding certain disciples, remember that. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? There's that word believed again. And they said unto him, We have not much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Remember in the Gospels, John the Baptist was a cousin to Jesus. And he baptized people for what? What did he baptize people for? Repentance. Repentance. They were baptized under repentance. But remember, when Christ died on the cross and he ascended, things changed again. And he gave different instructions for us under the grace age. These men were baptized under John. Next scripture. That's it, sorry. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with baptism of repentance. Just told you about being baptized. You're baptized in Jesus' name and you rise to newness of life. That's for the washing away of your sins. Repentance means to turn from it. Turn from it. Baptism, it says in the scripture, that you're baptized into Jesus Christ, and you wash away your sins. That's the purpose. You're buried with Him. You're taken on His name. Then Paul said to John, barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto people that they should believe on Him which should come after Him, that is on, we're saying that's on Jesus Christ. That's who you should believe. Next scripture, verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus, of the Lord Jesus. Let's go to the next one. Is that it? I can't keep up with you. You're faster than me. Of course, I'm old and gray. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Verse 7. And all the men were about twelve. I went through all that to say this. There's a lot of times we get baptized in certain ways, but the Scriptures tells us what we have to do. They were baptized unto John. Why is it important to be baptized? Because repentance says turn from your sin. Baptism says your sins are washed away. They're washed away. Never be remembered by him again. And you take on his name. The Bible doesn't speak of anywhere where there's sprinkling, and it doesn't even speak of infant baptism. We do do dedications. I don't know if Brother Ryan's known any or not. Baby dedications. Where we charge the parent. That baby knows nothing, but the parents have to train them up. So when we charge the parents in infant, for infant dedications, we charge the parent to raise them unto God, teaching them the things of God, and leading them in the things of God, because that's their responsibility. The Bible tells us, train up a child in the way it should go. And I know I, I evidently missed the mark because mine went the wrong way. But I'm still praying for them. As long as there's breath, there's still hope. And I know he can do it. And he's promised he would. So we charge the parent with that. <clears throat> to train up that child in the way it should go. 
And like I said, we are here to add to experiences what the scriptures relate to us. And I think it's important that we understand the scriptures. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6.11. <clears throat> First Corinthians six eleven. And such were some of you, but you are washed, baptism, you are sanctified by Christ, the Holy Ghost, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. And them again are steps. You believe, you repented. You're washed, you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name, calling on the name, baptizing you, and by the Spirit of our God. You receive His Spirit. Am I confusing you all? I hope not. I hope I'm clear with what's there, because God's Word's true. The Bible even tells us, <clears throat> I was looking online at Scripture's, and there was a place in here that says that uh, certain new Bibles have excluded scriptures, which scares me. If you write new, King James, the new King James is written in our modern language, and it doesn't skip scriptures or take them out. It changes words to our day that we understand it, and I understand that. But when you delete scriptures or you change scriptures, it says not to change the scriptures, not a dotting of an I or crossing of a T or a heap and damnation on your soul. I don't want to change anything that God's given us. I don't want to tell you anything that's not in this scripture because I'm accountable too. If I defy or hurt anybody, he says, don't hurt one of my little children. You know who his children are? We are. If I hurt one of you by telling you something wrong, I'm going to pay for that. Brother Ryan's got a lot on his shoulders. He's, he's got to give an account for each one of us. Kind of scary. <laughs> she thinks it's funny. <laughs> you need to see her after church. <laughs> it's important that we know what the word says. It's important that we know our steps in salvation and what God wants of us. Once we get through that salvation that he's taught us, then we can go do the will of the Father. We can do his will. We can live for him. And he can speak to us. You know, the most important thing in life for me is to hear his voice. I want to hear his voice. Sometimes it's from some of you when you talk to me. A lot of times it's from the pastor when he preaches. Sometimes it's from a stranger that walks up and says something that's good. Just, you know what that did to me? At the, and I told you about this last week about going and seeing that guy at Kroger. It lifted me up to hear somebody say, bless you. That lifted me up. Why? Because he knew Christ and I needed to lift it up. That strengthens us. When you tell somebody something and you're going to them and you lift them up with a good thing, the Bible doesn't tell us to tear down each other in our most holy faith. He said build each other up in your most holy faith. What's Brother Ryan doing? He's trying to build us up in our faith, walk us down the street in a straight line with Christ. And I'm sure he'd say the same thing Paul did, follow me as I follow Christ. If he's not following Christ, don't follow him because you're going on the wrong road. But all this is steps that God put in our life. Let's take a little look at what washed means. Let's look at Acts 22, 16. <clears throat> and now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. You know, there's no scripture in the Bible that has ever said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, be baptized in that. Matthew 28, 19 says that, but what does it mean? If you take them words to an English teacher, we got an English teacher here, and say, how do I comply with this? You know what she's going to tell you? You're going to have to know what the name is. So what do you do to get the name? You back up. Back up one scripture. What's 28, 18 say? We know what 19 says. What's 18 say? You've got to find what that means. She's getting there. 28, 18, Matthew. I'm sorry. 
<clears throat> That's what happens when you don't give it to them ahead of time. So this is, and I want to go to 19 after this, So, because you've got to back up and you've got to find what Father, Son, and Holy Ghost means. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What's that say? Jesus holds all power. Then it goes on to the next verse, 28, 19. So go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In the name. We just saw the name. I'll take you to one more scripture that tells you what that name is too. How Jesus got his name. Hebrews 1 and 4. <clears throat> this is about Jesus. Being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance, how do you get his name? By inheritance. By inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they, than the angels. What's better than the angels? God. Jesus obtained his name by inheritance. How we obtain our name? By inheritance. How did we get grafted in to be uh, part of the salvation? We were grafted in because of Jesus, and we take on his name. <clears throat> One more scripture. Revelations 22, verse 4. His name is all-powerful. There's no other name whereby we must be saved. That you can be saved than Jesus. Jehovah means Jesus, our salvation. Jehovah, Jesus, salvation. When the name was given, it was by inheritance. He was our salvation. Jehovah's always been our salvation. But Jesus had to come, be tempted always like man, take our sins to the cross, that we could be saved. And then he said, I want you to do these things. He took 12 and trained them. And they scattered through the world, teaching this Jesus. Teaching this Jesus. You know what I want? I want more than anything to know more about him. I want to walk with him. I want to know him. I want to hear his voice. I want him to be able to wake me up and say, I need you to pray. And I hope he can do that with all of us. Wake us up to pray because here's the end point of it. He's having you pray for somebody that needs help right then. Right then, he's calling. Can I hear your voice, Lord? I want to hear it. Some things only come by prayer and fasting. That's like casting out of devils. And you know what? Sometimes I think we're so surrounded by this world that we can't hear his voice because of all the other voices. What we need to know is his voice. There's one thing for sure I can tell you. When my mother hollered, I knew her voice. When my dad said something, I was scared to death. I knew that voice. I want to know his voice. Amen? And here's the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. You're taking on his name. What's the Bible tell us to do? He whose mind is stayed upon me, I will keep a perfect peace. It's always right here. It's always right here. He's coming back for those people that bear his name. He's coming back for them that love him. They're coming back to get us. He's made a place for us. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I would have told you. I'm going to go build you a mansion. What do we strive for down here? Better homes, better living, more money. Guess what? Streets of gold, mansions. He's already prepared a place for us. Gates of pearl, walls of jasper. Things we can't even imagine we haven't seen yet. But these steps are that important to what we do. They're important to that. Can we sing a song? <clears throat> I'll try to get it out. If you'll help me, and most of you probably know it. I want to sing more of you. You know that chorus? Sister Ryan, do you know that? She can get that. I should have told her ahead of time, too. Yeah. I did just... It just came to me. She can, she can kill you. I mean, kill me afterwards.
You know how our battles won? Joshua fought the battle of Jericho by what? Marching around them walls and singing. There's been many battles fought. When we begin to worship God, why the battle's won is he comes down and inhabits that worship. Worship's important too. It's part of our step. Amen? But I want more of him. The chorus goes, more of you, more of you. I've had all, but what I need is more of you. Of things I've had my fill, yet I hunger still. What I need is more of you. Amen? I need more of him. I need more of him. Will you worship with me in this chorus? More. Help me out, brother. Okay. More of you. More of you. I've had all, but what I need is more of you. Of things I've had my fill, and yet I hunger still. Empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer of more of you. Sing it with me. If that's your prayer, more of you, more of you, I've had all, but what I need is more of you, of things I've had my fear. And yet I hunger still, empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. One more time. So more of you. More. And yet I hunger still, empty and bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. Oh, let that be your prayer, more of you, Lord, more of you. You want to know how important baptism is? Where the man talked about Acts chapter 8, Philip goes to Samaria, or Philip meets the Ethiopian eunuch in the middle of the desert. If you'll read the beginning of Acts chapter 8, Philip is in the middle of a red hot revival in Samaria. And the Bible says in like the first six verses of Acts chapter 8, that multitudes came. I mean, Philip is getting it done. I don't know if he's selling prayer cloths or what he's doing, but whatever he's doing is working. 
And God goes, there's this Ethiopian out in the middle of the desert who's reading the scriptures, who needs things explained to him. And that one person was so important that the Lord takes Philip out of his red-hot revival in Samaria, plants him in the middle of the desert for one person who is hungry, who is reading the scriptures and goes, I'm reading it, but I don't completely understand it. And Philip, read, read Acts chapter 8, Philip catch, runs and catches up with his chariot. Right? You know, I don't know how fast you have to run to catch up with a chariot, but I'm not doing that. But that's what Philip did. If you read Acts chapter 8, and he gets in the chariot with him, and he explains the scripture to them. And you have that light bulb moment. I remember we were putting this old girl up. It was a Saturday, and Jack came in here, and he said, I want to be baptized. 81 years old. I want to be baptized. Why? Because if one person is hungry, God's going to make a way. And that's how important baptism is. I was so excited. But you read Acts, Acts chapter 8. Philip is pulled out of the revival in Samaria for one person. And the eunuch says, here is much water. What's keeping us from doing this? And they both go down into the water and come out of the water. When we baptized Jack, we put him all the way in and froze him to death. But he's all better now. Hallelujah. What a great lesson on baptism. I'm so glad that God has called us to be baptized in his name. I, uh, I was tempted to keep preaching. It was so good. I'll, I'll do two more points. When, when, when you go to chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 28, 19, and Brother Man explained that chapter 28, 20, 28, 18, read chapter 28, verse 16. It says all the disciples were there with him. Now, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter's preaching. Now, Peter was with the disciples, right? Peter was a disciple. In Matthew 28 and 16, 10 days later, Peter says in Acts chapter 2, 38, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in what? The name of Jesus Christ. Now, unless Peter completely falls off the wagon in 10 days, he's heard what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, right? And in Acts chapter 2, he says, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name. Now, here's my last point, and I'll stop preaching by the man's message. We are what? Buried with him in baptism, right? Why do we dunk people? Well, if we go to the cemetery and we bury people by sprinkling, that cemetery is going to get real gamey. We put them under. When we're buried, we go under with him in baptism. And we take on the name of Jesus, and we are buried with him. And he seals us with his name. And it's an exciting thing. We're going to have a new baptistry right there. It's going to be a permanent baptistry. And, I'm so, and I believe that in the 2022, we are going to dunk people in that baptistry in Jesus' name all year long. Do you believe it? I believe it. Thank you, brother man, for the word of God today. It was a good word. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Yeah, you're preaching, man. Whatever you want to say. Here, you want the mic?
amen. You can never be so bad that God won't take you back. And we have this warped view of God where we go. We never think, I've been too good for the devil to take me. Right? You don't go, well, you know, I have been far too good. The devil doesn't want me. But we do go, I've been so bad, God doesn't want me. We make the devil more merciful than God. And when you say that out loud, it sounds kind of dumb, doesn't it? No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, Jesus loves you right where you're at. And he's just waiting for you. What a great, great God we serve. Amen? Let's pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. We thank you for the word. We thank you for baptism. We thank you for what we've heard today. God, we believe in the name of Jesus that the word will move in our hearts and minds, transform us through the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you for each person who is here today, Lord, and that your word has touched us and moved in a special way. Lord, be with each of us as we go home. Keep us safe on the roads. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, come back on Saturday and let's have breakfast together. It'll be eggs and pancakes and bacon and all that stuff that's bad for you that tastes so good. Yeah, come on now. Oh, now the Holy Ghost is moving. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Hey, I love every one of you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll see you on Saturday. If I don't see you Saturday, I'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.